Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I get a lot of questions in the comments about how I etch my maker's mark onto my knives and what kind of equipment I use. Where do I get the etching machine? Where do I get the stencils? Things of that nature. So today, we're gonna build an electrochemical etching machine. Coming up. Hey guys, so the first etcher I built, I use Chris Crawford's plans off of his website. It's a great tutorial, and I'll put a link to his tutorial in the description below. The only downside is that all of his links for items come from Radio Shack. So Radio Shack's kind of on the way out, so I'm gonna redo this video tutorial based on Amazon links. So all the links below for the components are in the description. So those are affiliate links, just so you know. So all the, the dollars that come back to the channel through those links will go into making this channel better. And then lastly, I put a wiring diagram down below in a PDF format. Go ahead and print that out so that as you follow the video, you can follow along with the wiring diagram. And uh, that's it. We're gonna, we're gonna get into the components and uh, get started. So we're gonna start off by going over our major components for this build. Uh, the first major component is our transformer. So this transformer is a 24 VAC transformer. Uh, you can see I've already attached uh, the leads to each one of the connectors here. Uh, these are just 18 gauge wires. And pay no attention to the coloring. Uh, these are just wires that I had in my shop. Uh, if you want, you can buy an assortment of different colors and wire this thing uh, any way you want. But there's no rhyme or reason to the colors in this build. But these wires, I just soldered them onto the connections and then I, saw, I tied this one around here just to be a ground wire later. The next major component is our, uh, our toggle switch here. And what this switch is going to do for us is it's going to allow us to transition between AC power and DC power. So this is a DPDT on, off, on switch. Uh, you can pick these up pretty cheap. Uh, this here is our fuse holder. So this is gonna hold a one inch, I'm sorry, a one amp fuse for our unit, uh, just to keep us nice and protected. We have a light to tell us when the unit is on and off. We have an on and off switch, toggle switch. We have our two um, alligator clip plugins or uh, banana plug plugins. Uh, this, this is gonna be, this is gonna be where our leads plug into uh, for our uh, etching uh, handheld piece. And then lastly, we have our bridge rectifier. And this guy has four stubs coming off of it and they're labeled, they have a, a negative and a positive here. So it's gonna be important when we're wiring this thing to, to realize which, uh, which ones those are. But I went ahead and just put uh, four uh, nine inch pieces of uh, 18 gauge wire on here uh, just, to, just to get us started. I figured uh, not to show you guys the soldering because that's kind of um, boring and uh, time consuming. So I got all these wires soldered on here and so we're going to set this guy up. And lastly I have this uh, project box here. This uh, project box has outside dimensions of 200 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 75 millimeters. And this is what we're going to be building our, our etching machine in. So you can get these pretty cheap. I think it was $12 on Amazon. So now we're gonna drill some holes in our project box. First spot, we're gonna put the fuse. That's gonna be a half inch hole. And then these two holes are gonna be for the switches. Uh, they're gonna be 15, 30 seconds. This hole is gonna be a 17, 64 for the light. And then these two holes are gonna be uh, letter N bits for the um, banana plug uh, jacks. I then drilled some pilot holes to get me started. Uh, note that when you're drilling this plastic, the large bits really want to grab and pull into it. Uh, so just be careful when you're drilling it. It's, it's kind of a messy procedure, and, but uh, I got the job done. I ended up going back and cleaning up uh, the inside and outside of these holes with sandpaper and then a little chisel to get the uh, big pieces off. Now that we have our holes drilled, we're going to start putting some of these components in. Uh, like I said earlier, I pre-wired all these components uh, so that this would be a pretty quick process here, but um, go ahead and get all your components soldered up and wired together and this will be quick for you. So the first thing we're going to do is put in our fuse holder. 
into this uh, half inch hole that we just drilled. So you just tighten this down back here. Okay, next piece, we're gonna do our switch, on off switch. All right, then we'll do our toggle. Take these wires off, put, so there's no wires on this guy. Shouldn't matter uh, which way this goes, but I have it with the number one facing up. I feel like that's probably the appropriate direction for this thing. And we're gonna be wiring this so that our AC power is up and our DC power is down. So this is gonna be AC, DC. Okay. And then, uh, you know, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten some of these up. It's maybe hard to get to them later. We'll put in our light. And lastly, we have our two uh, clips. So those are all of our side panel components. We have our fuse holder, our on-off switch, our toggle for AC-DC, our light, and our two banana port uh, jacks. Okay, so I went ahead and I took this out. Uh, this is gonna be extremely difficult to wire up if it's in the box. So we'll wire it up and then we'll poke it through and finish that one out. I also drilled a hole in the back of the box for our power cable. Um, we're going to do this kind of the poor boy way, uh, just poking the power cable through and then taping a big wad here so that it can't pull it back out. But if you want to do this nicer, you can get one of those uh, male plugs, or uh, I'm sorry, female plugs for a power cable, kind of like on the back of your computer, and you can install that right here. I have one, but I'm going to be using it in a different project, so I'm not going to use it for this. Um, our uh, this guy here, our, our uh, transformer, just so happens to nicely line up with some of these holes in here. It actually lines up with uh, this hole and I think this hole in a diagonal. So I had some of these small little screws um, from an old appliance. So I'm going to use those to screw this transformer down into our box. You know, that came out of my mouth way easier than it is to do. If your box doesn't have mounting uh, holes that will fit your transformer, go ahead and use some double-sided tape. It works pretty good. We're gonna be using double-sided tape on our uh, bridge rectifier. So it'll work perfectly fine. You're not going to be dropping this thing out of an airplane or anything, so um, it should be perfectly fine for your application. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to put the uh, bridge rectifier right, right here. Okay. So for the sake of uh, this video and this wiring diagram, I am going to put this trans uh, bridge rectifier into the box with the negative post pointing to the top right. It's going to go in like this. Here we go. Okay. So the negative is going to go in the top right like this. Okay. So that guy uh, should be on there. Now we're going to take our power cut cable, which is a uh, which I put a three prong on one side, 
and then strip the other side. Just a standard power cable. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. And we're gonna we're gonna snake this guy through this hole back here. Now it's just a matter of connecting this uh, snake's nest in here. Let's start with our neutrals. So our neutrals are as follows. We have this uh, green wire that's, I guess a lot of them is green. We have this wire that's attached to the base of the transformer. We have this center, uh, black wire in this case, that's attached to the center post of our transformer. That's gonna be a neutral. And then we have the neutral of our power cable, which is right here. So I'm gonna try to get all this behind, try to have some decent cable management here. And let's grab this green wire. And these three together are going to be uh, our ground or neutral. I guess ground is the right word for it. These are gonna be our green or ground. Uh, let's go next to our, uh, I guess our black line here. This is gonna be kind of our power coming in. So we'll go from the black line. First, this goes to the fuse. So let's see, we'll have it go to here. Let's go to our fuse. And then from the fuse, it's going to go to the switch. So let's route this fuse line all the way back here. And then attach it to our black power line here. So then we'll go from our uh, fuse over onto our switch. So this is our second fuse line right here. You can see I cut these a little too long for this project. It's gonna be a rat's nest. Uh, but anyway, we'll go from uh, our fuse to our switch, power switch. So we're gonna go from the other side of our switch so that's this guy right here. Other side of our switch to one side of our light to the 117V uh, terminal on our transformer. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our white going. Uh, the white's gonna go to the opposing side here, uh, the zero V port on our, uh, on our transformer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. It also goes to the other side of our light. So this white will connect to zero, the zero V post of our transformer and then to this other light lead. I think that's actually called neutral. For the record, I am not an electrician. So if you electrocute the shit out of yourself while doing this project, you can't hold me liable. Just saying. Next, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and move on to uh, the other side of the transformer. We're gonna do the 12 volt section of this uh, transformer. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our terminal that is on the right hand side that is labeled 12 volt. Uh, this is a red wire for me. We're also gonna find the wire coming from the top left of the bridge rectifier, the little wavy line, to the left of the negative. The negative is in the top right in my scenario. So we're gonna find that one. And then we're going to grab another lead that will go to one side of our switch. So we'll put these three together. And then we'll tie this in to our switch here, we'll tie it into the bottom post. So this guy right here, or one of the bottom posts. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the left 12 volt lead, hook it up to the bottom right terminal of our bridge rectifier, which is this guy. 
and then attach another lead onto it. And now this little guy will be going to the other side of our switch. So let's connect these. We'll come over to our switch here and we'll connect this guy to the bottom, the other, the other bottom terminal. The next step is we're going to go after the middle two terminals on our toggle switch. So uh, the first one we'll do is uh, we'll do the black one first. So I'm going to put the black one on the right side here. So let's see. This guy is going to be utilized for our, uh, we're going to use a gator clip on this one coming into this banana plug and on the red one we're going to have our actual handheld uh, etcher. Middle terminal. And then we'll find the red one here, the red banana, um, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the red banana plug port. And we'll connect it to this other middle one. And lastly, we're going to connect our, uh, going to connect our AC power here. So coming off of the negative terminal, we're going to come into this top, top one. So the negative terminal is this guy right here which is the top right of your bridge rectifier to this guy. And then the positive, which is the bottom left of our bridge rectifier is coming into this top, top one here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do a walkthrough of this system. Uh, while it's all sprawled out like this so you can see where everything's going. We'll start at the, the power cable. So our black lead from the power cable is going from the power to our fuse. From our fuse, it then goes to our on-off switch. From the on-off switch, it is coupled with one lead from the light and then it goes to uh, this black lead here, which connects to the back of our transformer. And then from the back of our transformer, this other lead goes to uh, the white wire on our power and the other side of the light. So that's the full loop there on the power. The green uh, or the ground from our power cable is being connected to the base of the transformer and also to the center of the uh, of the transformer on the bottom side. So you got three terminals on the bottom side. This is the DC side and you're connecting the ground to the center one. Then going to the DC side and how we have this uh, this toggle switch wired up. On the ACE, on the DC side we have uh, two 12 volt terminals. We're taking the right 12 volt terminal connecting it to the top left bridge rectifier terminal, the top left wavy line, to the left of the negative terminal, which is the top right of this bridge rectifier. But we're then taking that and connecting it to the bottom right of our toggle switch, and then coming off of the other side of the bottom, the bottom left of our toggle switch, we are connected to uh, the bottom right of our bridge rectifier, and the other side, the left side of our 12 volt terminal. So that's how our DC power makes its circuit. Our black uh, port for our, our uh, banana plug goes to the right side. When you're looking at it from the front, we're going at the right side uh, middle terminal and the red goes to the left side middle terminal. Then the AC power is simple, uh, the negative uh, bridge rectifier connection. It goes to the, I'm sorry, the top left of this toggle switch for the AC toggle and then the positive goes to the top right of this toggle switch. So that is the entire wiring of uh, this etching machine. I'm going to go ahead and put it all together and then we'll test it out. I tried to get it all stuffed in there as well as I could. If you're going to do this yourself, you may want to cut these leads a little bit smaller. But it all fit. So just carefully uh, press it into the gaps there. 
after we got everything in there, we put the top on. The, the top has this uh, insulating uh, piece of elastic around it, so it, it uh, you got to put a little pressure on it to, to get it to seat. And then we just uh, screwed it on. Hey, power! Alright, so now we're going to make the handheld uh, etching tool. I had this bolt here, so I got my excellent tap set and use, uh, use it to determine what thread size this bolt was. It was a, a metric size. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a piece of brass, uh, we're going to drill and tap it to accept that bolt. So I forgot what size bit this was, but it was a uh, lettered size to fit that metric bolt. I'm using my mini mill here to align the tap and then tapping it by hand. This ensures that I have a nice straight tapped hole. This hole uh, did not end up being straight. I have a very dull one inch bit that I was drilling a countersink for that bolt head. So this is the whole assembly before glue up. Pretty simple. I'm taking an 18 gauge wire and wrapping it around the head of the bolt. Pushing it through our piece of 2x4 and then I'll screw it on to that brass uh, contact plate. I'll put a lot of glue in here, make sure the threads are all nice and glued. I'm using some mid-cure BSI two-part epoxy. Get it all nice and tight and then uh, fill up this, this countersunk hole here. And after I fill up this hole with glue, I mounted this thing in my vise and then I held that wire up so that it's in the center of the tool. So you can sand this wood down, but that's pretty much it. So first thing you do is make sure you put your banana clip on a uh, black lead here onto a gator clamp. And then this is an older lead that I had made, just a piece of brass uh, with a 18 gauge wire coming out of it and a banana plug. Same method I just used. So we'll just push this in here. We'll take our gator clip, push it in here. The next step is we'll take a piece of felt. Uh, you can find these also on Amazon. You'll put the felt around your electrode here. Hold it on with a rubber band. Okay, have some water, pour a little salt in it. Clip your lead to it. Take a stencil. Normally I would tape this down, but for now I'm not. We have this set on AC power. So our first etch is going to be AC. We'll dip this in here. Okay. Go ahead and turn our machine on. And then. have our AC etch there. Mm -hmm. And there's our DC. AC, DC. So the DC power gives a nice deep etch and the AC power gives a dark etch that you can sand off. Alright guys, that's it. I know that was a very tedious build, so I appreciate you sticking it out with me. It was kind of hard to show uh, where everything was going with all those wires in that box, especially with a lot of them being the same color. So I hope you got something out of it. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and like this video. Until the next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.